Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kev Tech here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Uh, happy Saturday, and today I want to go over technologies you may encounter if you do help desk, IT support, service desk. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, I do IT videos and stuff, so prove yourself about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live. I really appreciate it, alright? So today I want to go over technologies you need to know if you're doing help desk, IT support, or service desk. Why am I going over this? I'm going over this because it's 2021, it's a new year, um, there's certain technologies that have been released, or certain things that have changed. Obviously technology changes every single year, so I have to make a video on this and go over this. Do you have to know everything on this list? No. All you care about is Active Directory, Exchange 365, or Office 365, and um, Windows 10. That's pretty much what you need, that's pretty much what you care about if you're doing help desk, is Windows 10, um, Exchange 365, um, and um, Active Directory, like NTFS, stuff like that. But I'm going to go over all this stuff because there's some stuff that you may see in your job. You may see like a combination of certain things. You may not. So it depends where you work. Obviously, this is not everything. This is some of it in Help Desk or IT Support or Service Desk, all right? So let's go over this real quick. It's been a while. It's been a while since I, I feel weird, you know, making this video on the board. It's been, it's been a while, right? Right, guys? It's been a while. Anyway, so... Yeah, so Server 2016, 2019, you may see Server 2016, 2019, depends where you work. Um, there is actually um, an understanding when you're doing, when you do help desk, you have to understand what Active Directory is, what is group policy, what is NTFS, what are security groups, you know, some companies may require you to add someone to a security group, security group, whether they need access to a shared drive, to a folder, they have to be part of a group for VPN to work, you don't know, it depends where you work. So you understand, this is the reason why like, you need to understand about creating labs at home, making your own virtual lab, because it gives you confidence. So then you have something to talk about when you go to a job interview. This is why I tell people, download VirtualBox, download VMware, download something, and make your own lab at home, and practice Active Directory, practice servers, practice Windows 10, maybe practice Office 365. You know, you don't know. You're going to see this in your job and help desk. So you need to understand how these things work. Hopefully that makes sense. All right? Labs are important. Um, what is the equivalent of Active Directory um, for Apple? It's actually Apple uses Jump Cloud. So if you don't know anything about IT, Jump Cloud is like Active Directory for Apple devices um, or Apple products. There's also Jam Jam F or Jam Jeff. You know that application as well is also for Apple devices. Um, some companies use roaming profiles. Depends where you work, obviously. Uh, you have to understand that right now with with this as well as Exchange 365, you understand about mailboxes, distribution groups. Obviously on Exchange 365, you're doing help desk, you will encounter issues with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, add-ins. You know, there's add-ins. Obviously some people want add-ins on Excel, some people want add-ins on Outlook. Understand how to run and repair, how to run and reinstall, how to go into the C drive folder, navigating to add-ins folder, removing it, deleting it, recreating it. You may see Skype for Business as well. Removing the SIP folder, deleting the folder, recreating it, you know, stuff like that. You will encounter that if you're doing help desk or IT support. Outlook is very important because Outlook, everyone is trying to send emails and stuff like that. They're doing these negotiations, whether you work in a hedge fund or not. The majority of the world uses Outlook, so you will encounter Outlook issues. Oh, my, my Outlook keeps crashing. Oh, my Outlook is, my mailbox is full. Oh, every time I send an email, I get a bounce back. Oh, I try to send an email, it's stuck in my inbox. You know, you get you get issues like that when you're doing help desk. So, understand how Outlook works. Understand what is safe mode. Otherwise, you, don't, you cannot you cannot tell a user to restart the computer. That's not the fix for an Outlook issue. All right. So, you need to know how to actually fix the Outlook issues. So, if you're doing help desk, you need to understand how that works. All right? Which I'll make a video on Outlook in depth for Office 365. So, don't worry about that. Um, communication, understand that we have the whole pandemic now. So, there are people working from home with laptops. So some companies may use Cisco Jabber. Some companies may use my cell phones, cell phones, applications. You download this application on your on your computer. You're able to communicate with users and make phone calls from your laptop. So you will encounter that in your job. You may not encounter it in your job. It depends where you work. So people are working with laptops and they're actually able to use Cisco Jabber to make phone calls with it. If that makes sense, you can make calls with this. Sometimes you may be the one in charge of assigning the phone number. Sometimes you may be the one that actually sets up their voicemail. You don't know. It depends where you work. But I have to go over it because you may encounter it in your job. You may not, you know. Uh, obviously, there is WebEx as well. So a lot of these companies, are because everyone's working from home, they are using a lot of video applications, whether it's WebEx, whether it's Zoom, 
whether it's blue jeans, it could be any applications, you will encounter that in your job. Some sort of video application. You may have to troubleshoot that. Oh, my camera's not working. My video's not working. My microphone is not working. They can't hear me. They can't hear me when I talk, but they, but I can hear them. You know, stuff like that. You will encounter that. Oh, my audio drivers aren't working. Every time I open up Skype for business, I start a video call, my whole Skype crashes. Every time I start a video with Zoom, my whole Zoom crashes. Um, I need the Zoom add-in plug-in on my Outlook. You know, stuff like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then some companies using forms of communication, they might be using uh, Slack. So, and, and my friend, and I have a friend in an, uh, an IT environment, he has it integrated with Slack, combined together with Jira. So if you ping someone on a Slack channel, or you ping a certain channel, it creates a ticket for you. It creates a ticket, and then automatically it gets sent to everyone and help us. That's just an example. Slack is being, being used a lot now. So that's just something you may see in your job. You may not. It depends where you work. Um, there are different types of phones, obviously. Some people are, are some people are, are, might be in the office, so you may see Cisco phones, you may see Mitel phones, you may see Avaya phones, and they do the piggyback connection. So basically, you plug in the back of the phone to the to the back of the phone, obviously, and you plug that to the wall, and then the other end goes to the, uh, there's another port on the back of the phone that's for the computer that goes to the computer, and then the other end goes to the back of the phone, and it gives it internet. So you may see that in your job environment, and you may not see that in your environment. Hopefully, that makes sense. Um, Obviously, you have to go over Azure portal. So some companies, a, they're using uh, Active Directory. They have an on-prem Active Directory combined with Azure Connect. So basically, it's a hybrid environment. So you have a combination of on-prem with some with 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 that on, with, with that connected with Azure Azure Connect. So they have Microsoft Azure combined together with it. So any changes you make on Active Directory, it syncs over to Azure. It's just something that you may encounter in your job, you may not. I know someone that does help us, level one, and they're doing Azure portal. And they're logging in and they're creating accounts in there. So, obviously, it depends where you work. Um, you will see AWS. You may see VMware. You may see Hypervisor. You may see Citrix. You may see ZenApp servers. You may see stuff like that. You may have to troubleshoot Citrix if someone cannot remote into a computer or they can't connect to an application, they can't do anything on their computer because they don't have Citrix workspace work Citrix workspace on their computer. So those are the things you may encounter in your job, you may not encounter it. Obviously you understand deployment tools, whether it's SSEM, Ivanti, uh, PDQ, um, understand how to image computers, building computers, pressing the F12 key, going into the BIOS, changing the BIOS, so it boots into Pixie, then you go into SSEM, you go into Ivanti, you go into Norton Ghost, you pick your image, you set the image up, and you build that computer for, for a user, for a client, whether it's a laptop or a desktop. So that's what you, you may see in your job, you may not see it. So this is like a combination of help desk, service desk, IT support. Uh, remote tools, obviously you will have your remote tools. Um, to remote into someone's computer, they're having an issue, they're calling you. Uh, yeah, but what's going on? Oh yeah, my outlook keeps crashing. Oh, right, let me do a quick screen share with you. I want you to go to this website. And put in a code and I'll remote in real quick, all right? So you may see that, you may do that in your job. You may, you may not do it in your job. Some companies, most companies use this. They use a remote tool. If you don't use this in your job, then I don't know what's going on in your job. Because most companies use this. They use something to remote into someone's computer. So it has to be something in your job. If there's nothing in your job, then you could recommend something to your manager, hopefully, all right? So you may be using TeamViewer. You may use BoneGuard. You may use AnyDesk. You may use Soho Assist. You may use LogMeIn. You may use Go to Assist. You may use Kessela. Um, you may use SSCM. You right click on the desktop and you remote in by right clicking. Go to SSCM portal. Right click on it and you you know, just remote into the desktop. You may see that. Um, antivirus programs. Obviously, there's McAfee. There's Silence. You may see Carbon Black in your job. Um, you have ticketing systems as well. The ticketing systems. There are different types of ticketing systems. So basically, what that means is uh, a user sends a request. Basically, send an email, they send a request, it generates and creates an incident report, or incident ticket, basically. An incident ticket, which it gets, it gets created, you really, rather you use Jira, you may use ServiceNow, you may use Remedy, you may use Spiceworks, you may use something else. So you need to understand how a ticketing system works. Obviously, most of the stuff that I talk about here, um, some of it does not get covered in A+. So that's why I tell people, make your own lab, create an active directory. Um, Spiceworks is absolutely free. You don't got to pay anything for Spiceworks. You create your own little account. You start creating tickets for yourself. You start assigning, reassigning tickets, understanding the how to open a ticket, how to resolve a ticket, how to close a ticket. If you know how to do that and put notes on a ticket, then you understand how ticketing system works. It's basically all you care about. Um, 
I circle VPN because you will encounter VPN if you have a laptop. Um, the user can't log in. I can't log into VPN. They're not part of the right group. VPN doesn't work. They don't have two-factor authentication enabled on their on their account. So they might have dual. They may have another application like, uh, like Okta or something else or, or um, RSA. And they can't log in because RSA is not set up or dual is not set up or these, this two-factor authentication isn't set up. And because of that, they cannot log into VPN. So some companies have it set up that way with Cisco AnyConnect or, or, uh, or Endpoint Checkpoint Connection, you know, stuff like that. You may see that in your job. So VPN is like, oh, I'm locked out. They're either locked out of two-factor authentication, their password has expired, or they're locked out of Active Directory. You may encounter that in your job, or you encounter certificates where they can't log in. They, kick, they click the connect button to log into VPN. It just circles around. It doesn't do anything, and it says invalid certificate. You may encounter that in your job. That does happen in IT. But that does happen in help desk. That does happen in IT support. So you may, you may encounter it. You may not. Um... Windows 10, obviously, if you're doing help desk, you need to understand Server 2016 or Server 2019, Exchange 365, and you need to understand Windows 10. Some companies may not use Windows 10. They might use an app, or you might be in a Mac environment where you're using Mac OS X, and you're using Jump Cloud with Mac OS X combined with AirWatch. You may see that in your job. You know, it depends where you work, like I said. Uh, obviously, you need to understand about Linux. So some companies use Linux. Now, Linux is actually showing up a lot more now in IT. PowerShell is showing up a lot more. Python is showing up a lot more in IT now. For help desk, not so much, but it is showing up now. Now, actually, certain automation tools are being used now if you do help desk IT support. You will see that in your job if you work in a, in a, um, in a job that does automation. You will, you will encounter that. My job, I do automation with PowerShell. So, PowerShell, and I combine PowerShell with silence. And I, I, I create a PowerShell command, a script. I run it. It runs a report for me. It checks all the computers that have silence installed on it. If it doesn't have silence installed on it, it will say non-compliant, and I have to run a report again. And then I have to run silence on the back end and install it on all those computers that are missing silence. So that's just an example of PowerShell. You may, it's good to know PowerShell. It's good to know. Like even your help desk, I know it's not, you don't require it, but in the future, you might want to know how to automate stuff. You don't want to be going into Active Directory, manually creating a user account, Manually adding someone to a group manually, you know, just doing things manually like you have to figure out how to automate it Make your life a lot easier. You're less stressed out. You know, that's, that's if that makes sense That's why I tell people learn all this basic stuff But then also learn a little bit a little bit a little bit moderate advanced stuff if that makes sense just a little bit not a lot All right um, You're gonna encounter Adobe obviously if you work in a Mac environment you will encounter Adobe Creative Cloud uh, Adobe Creative Cloud and Windows 10 as well. You will encounter that. If you don't know what that is, you can just go ahead and Google that. But Adobe Creative Cloud, some people use uh, Illustrator, Photoshop, Adobe Acrobat DC. Um, depends where you work, obviously. So you will encounter that in your job and how to trouble. You have to know how to troubleshoot that. You may encounter, you may not encounter it. Um, like I said before, MDM. There's MDM, Mobile Device Management. So basically, you have your phone. I'm take out my phone. You have a phone. Um, MDM is installed on your phone. You, with MDM, you have the ability to wipe a phone, delete a phone, unlock their phone, change their pin on their phone. You can either find, you can even find out where they, where they, where they are located. Because some, some of these applications, like Mobile Iron, it actually tells you where they're located, where the phone's located at, and everything. You can even, you can even, um, with Master 60, you can even send a buzz on the phone. So it buzzes. If someone's looking for their phone, you can send a buzz notification on their phone. So a lot of these applications like Company Portal from Microsoft, MDM, you install it on your phone and the, company's, the company manages that device. AirWatch, same thing. Monster 60, same thing. Mobile Iron, same thing. So these applications manage this phone device right over here and then they could delete the phone, they could reinstall it. You could reinstall your iOS or your Android, you know, your Android device, whatever you have, you could do, they could do that. That's what MDM does. It actually, it's done for a compliance reason, so that's the reason why some companies may give a user uh, a, a company phone instead of a because they don't want it on their personal phone. So you may have a company that they have um, company phone uh, company phones assigned to them. You know, hopefully that makes sense. Um, hardware, understand what hardware is. Whether you're working with a vendor, maybe the maybe you're working with a vendor, and maybe the the app, maybe that laptop has insurance on. You may have to call Dell. You may have to call uh, uh, the vendor for your Cisco router, or you may have to call a vendor for a certain application. You may have to call a vendor for a certain uh, laptop, monitor, keyboard, mouse. You know, depends where you work, obviously. You know, hardware as well. Break and fix, changing memory, changing hard drives, changing a mouse, changing a keyboard, 
changing a monitor, uh, setting up a new hire. Oh, uh, uh, Kevin, yeah, it's Friday, right? Hey, Kevin, yeah, um, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, we have a new hire on Monday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, I need you to come in uh, like an hour early to set up his monitors, his keyboard, his mouse, and his desktop. And I also need you to create an Active Directory account for him. You know, so that's stuff that you will encounter in your job. I'm not making this up. Those are the things you will encounter in your job, like last minute requests for new hires. You may not encounter, you will, you may not encounter, you you may not encounter. It depends where you work, obviously. But that happens a lot in IT. You have a new hire, he starts Monday morning, you don't know about it, they tell you about it, and you create the account. Then you have to come in two hours early or an hour early, and you set up their the hardware equipment. A phone, a laptop, a keyboard, a mouse, monitors. You log in as them, you open up Outlook, you make sure all their applications are working. You leave a new hire sheet or new hire template, you put it on their desk, and they have their they have their first name, their last name, their email address. They have what who to contact for help desk, email, and everything. They have all like, like a new hire template. If your company is organized, they have a new hire sheet or new hire template. You give it, you leave it on the desk, they read it, they contact help desk, and you help them change their password and stuff like that. So it's not like hardware stuff like that. That's what that's what you will encounter in a job environment. So and lastly, the most important thing is uh, customer service. If you're doing help desk, you're gonna you're gonna have rowdy customers. You might have customers that are upset, angry. Um, just don't take it too personal. Don't take it to heart. Um, if a customer gets mad at you, it's okay. Um, we try to resolve it to your best of your ability. Have a lot of patience. A lot of these customers or a lot of these clients, they get upset because their computer is not working. So understand that they're they're mad at their computer. They're not mad at you. So have patience with them. So help desk is not for everyone. Like I tell people, like if, if you're brand new to IT, you have no patience with people, then it's kind of hard for you to work help desk. And then some people want to skip help desk. Like I don't, I don't think that's a good idea because you want to understand the fundamentals of IT before you jump into network admin or sysadmin. But some people might hate me because of that because they want to be a sysadmin, they want to be a network admin, they want to make 100K without doing any work. You know, I'm just being realistic with you. You're not going to do that if you have no job experience. Just this doesn't, It doesn't work that way, you know. I wish it worked that way, but it doesn't work that way. So you have to understand these things. If you're doing sysadmin, network admin, you understand how this stuff works. Some of this stuff works, not everything, obviously. Some of this stuff, then you, you're more relaxed. You're more less stressed out in your job. You're a, you're, you're a sysadmin. You know what Active Directory is. Imagine you go into, you're, 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 imagine you get picked as sysadmin. You get, you get a job today. You're brand new. You go in there. Like, what the hell is Active Directory? I don't even know what that is. You know, it's just, that just happens. That happens in IT a lot. I get, I get people on my Discord asking me all the time, where should I start? I'm like, dude, start with help desk. And they're like, they look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, no, like, this is going to help you. Trust me. And then don't worry about the high-level jobs later on. And then we could talk about that. We could talk about that later on, whether it's sysadmin, network admin. You let me know. I'll tell you what, what to study, what to work on. You could be a network admin or a sysadmin next, in a year or two. You could, if you're really aggressive, you could be a sysadmin in, in, in a year, a year and a half, you know, making good money. But you need to start at the bottom first. Start with help desk. Know how to deal with customer service. Know how to deal with people. And you'll be good to go after that. And that's it. Um... And that's it. That's pretty much it. Obviously, these are not all the applications you use. Obviously, if you're new to IT, you're like, damn, Kev, Kev just went over a thousand things. No, you don't got to know all of this. What you care about is Server 2016, Active Directory, Group Policy, and NTFS, Exchange 365, Windows 10, and a ticket system. So if you know how to do a Windows 10 ticket system, Exchange, and Server 2016, you're pretty much good. All this other stuff, they'll probably train you in your job. Depends where you work, obviously. But you don't gotta know everything. This is crazy. If I tell you to know everything, that's impossible. You're not gonna know everything. Learn, learn Active Directory because you're gonna get, you're gonna get, in a, you're gonna go on a job interview. They're gonna ask you about that. So learn about Active Directory, Exchange, Windows 10. If you have a ticketing system, you could learn. Obviously, it's a spice which is free. Give it a go, man. You'll be happy over that. Trust me, you'll be in a better place after. You won't be all over the place. All right. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. And I hope this helps you out in some shape or form. Obviously, it's not everything. And don't try to learn everything. This is crazy. They'll train you. Learn the basics. Learn the fundamentals of server 2016. Make that lab. And you should be good to go after that. All right? Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Peace. Bye.